Thank you. Hi. Hello. It's Rebecca. I eat books. It's been a while since I've said that. It's Monday. I'm gonna start a weekly vlog. Can you believe it? It's been a while. It's not just any Monday. Today's the first day of Tiny's Week. If you don't know what Tiny's Week is, Jessica from Jessica's Book Stack on the Instagram is doing a challenge to read as many tinies as one can during this week, starting today. Who can say what a tiny is? I was thinking below 150 pages is probably a tiny. I went through my shelves and found my tiniest tinies. This is what I have. Didn't purchase anything. I have one, two, three, six books here. Do we think I can get through all six in a week? Probably not. I have two Penelope Fitzgerald here. I've got Mona, Signs Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera, Canals Card Criticism, and Open Water. So I think I'm gonna start with Signs Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera. All right, and now I need to get to work and do my job, live my life. I will report back to you once I've started this. Hello. Hi. It is Monday evening. I'm just getting started on some dinner. It's dark very early. I thought I'd give you an update because I'm a little more than halfway through. 60 pages in, there's about 100 pages. It's so good. Guys, this book is really good. Our main character lives in Mexico. She has a brother who went across the river to the United States and they have not seen him since he left and her mother sent her to find him. She's crossing the border. It is dark, menacing, the tone is really good, suspenseful. She notices all the men with their guns and their knives. She focuses in on the weapons they have on their belt, so you as the reader do too. It is enjoyable. I'm definitely going to finish it tonight, so I'll report back tomorrow, and then we'll pick a second tiny, but Today is Monday, which means that tonight I will watch last night's episode of Succession. Because Succession comes out on Sunday at 9, and I cannot stay up that late. Um, but now I'm going to make dinner, watch Succession, finish this book, and go to sleep. Cool. Yeah. Did you have fun with your buddy? I did. Thanks. Did you skateboard? No. So he edits these? He's a copy editor, not the editor. Where does it come from? Where's so the Bay Area? Cool. Or you said he met the people in the Bay Area. Cool. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Uh, how's it going? It's Tuesday morning. I'm eating oatmeal. I went to the gym this morning and then I stopped at the craft store because the holiday season is approaching and I have some crazy concept that I'm going to have time to knit socks for everyone I love before the holidays. It's probably not gonna happen, but we'll try. Tuesday. I have some work to do after I enjoy this oatmeal. I want to update you on these tinies. I loved this tiny. So good. Signs Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera. Where to begin? Our main character is a woman named Makina. When the book starts, there's a sinkhole that she narrowly escapes. At first she thinks she's dead. She says, slippery bitch of a city, right? After that, she sees her mother, Cora, and her mother sends her on a journey to cross over into what we assume is America, although it's not explicitly stated, to retrieve her brother who made the same crossing earlier. It becomes a quest story. She visits all these people who help her on her journey. Lots of trials and tribulations. This is a minor spoiler, although I don't really think it is one because this book is so good and the language is so good and you should absolutely read it. Regardless of what happens in the plot, I do believe that we are meant to understand that Machina did die at the beginning of the story. 
in the sinkhole. This is her journey to her final resting place. It means that her brother is also dead. When he crossed into America, he was in pursuit of a piece of land that he was told was meant for him, was promised for him, the promised land. Get it? Get it? She's looking for the prodigal son. The book has nine chapters, which to me seems very evocative of the nine circles of hell. She's crossing the river, which evokes the river Styx. Lot of mythological imagery. I think it's pretty clear that, I mean, signs preceding the end of the world, I think, it's not trying to be subtle about the fact that it is a, a tale of death. The assertion is that immigrating, because this is an immigration story, is a death. That you lose some part of yourself when you lose your homeland. I think that's a very compelling thesis. The best part of this book is what I haven't even talked about yet, which is its obsession with language and the weird things it does with language. If you know me, you know I love a book that does weird stuff with language. And this book is really obsessed with the idea of English versus Spanish and our character, Machina, is bilingual and this is sort of her superpower it's what gains her trust and access to lots of people uses it to her advantage throughout her journey then she reflects on language and the way it changes there's a really interesting piece around sort of spanglish although of course it's not called that in the the adaptations of language that happens among migrants which is really well written and then there's all this weird stuff where there's certain like verbs that are used in a way that you're not used to using them so or you're not used to seeing them so when she has sex with men she calls it shucking i assume that it's sex there's also this word that comes up all the time which is burst which means sort of like to move through it's interesting because it's sort of like reversed is to move back so to verse would be to move forward although we don't use it that way every moment of her journey she's versing onward and i love that yeah it's really good i recommend this a fantastic way to kick off tiny's week now i'm reading mona when i showed my pile of tinies mona was by far when people were most excited about me reading lots of suggestions for mona so i just started this morning i've read the first chapter like 15 pages i don't really have much to say the premise is very intriguing to me we have a academic woman kind of fucked up kind of odd definitely feminist angry in like a fucked up academic setting so that screams me i love that i'm a little confused about the voice we have definitely her internal monologue it is an omniscient narrator in that it's from her perspective it's telling us her anxieties then it also describes her physical characteristics at one point which felt very like almost male gazy to me i was like why are you telling me how good looking and tall she is um this is not what and then she talks a lot about how much she loves her vape pen and she loves vaping pot cool it sounds a little bit like me when i was 13. does everyone know that i smoke pot i need everyone to know how cool i am you could have just had her every time something happens that would make somebody feel uncomfortable she hits her pen and i would have gotten it you don't need to explicitly say to me i love pot so i'm not I'm not sure about the voice yet, but I'm excited to keep going. So this is the tiny for today uh, after I get some work done. Talk to you guys later. Guys, UPS man was here. This is a pillow from an amazing small company, a woman named Annie Axtell. She lives in British Columbia, and this is probably lame to admit, but I won this in an Instagram giveaway. Did you know that people actually win those? Cause I thought it was a scam and look at me. So sweet. Congrats on winning Rebecca. I love it so much. It's gonna look so cute on my bed. Thank you, Annie. Hello. It is Tuesday evening. I'm sitting on the couch with my new pillow and my old dog and my dinner and um, I'm gonna sit down and read Mona for a little bit. My partner Justin has a late class on Tuesday night. He won't be home for a while. So I'm gonna sit here and read this book. My goal is to finish this sock that I'm knitting. Tonight maybe? And then go to bed early. Tomorrow is Wednesday. 
I'll be working from my office tomorrow, going in. Before that, in the morning, my friend Alex said she would give me a tutorial on how to use the squat rack at the gym, which I'm very intimidated by. She's a badass. She recently had a piece on NPR on Life Kit, which is a cool little segment about women lifting weights and getting strong. And she looks like a badass in the squat rack, so I asked her to give me a lesson so I wouldn't be so afraid. So we're gonna do that tomorrow. I'm scared. And I gotta pick out a new tiny after I finish Mona. Oh, Mona, update. I'm enjoying it. So our main character, Mona, is a writer. She's nominated for a prize. So she flies to Sweden with all the other writers nominated for this prize. In that way, it's got a little bit of Cusk vibes. Like she's on the airplane, she's meeting all these people. But it's definitely darker, more sarcastic than Cusk. It's definitely a takedown of academia, and the politics of academics, performative culture of academia, and it's also dark. It's concerned with bruises and harm and how long bruises last, the length that harm stays on our body. Lots of sex and thoughts about masturbation and porn and the place of sex in writing. I'm not sure where it's going with all of that yet. It does seem to want to sort of like shock and awe, talk about semen and it goes out of its way to have toilet humor and it feels a little bit like it's trying to be shocking. Um, but I'm enjoying it. So dinner, Mona, knitting. Night, friends. Good morning. It's Wednesday. It's early. I'm headed to the gym to go get my butt kicked by my friend Alex. Please pray for me. Hello. I survived the gym. It was great. Alex told me how to use like all the cool squat rack and deadlift do hickey. Now I'm not going to be scared of all the mean men at the gym. And now I'm going to get on my bike because I'm working for my office today on campus. I'm going to return this book to the campus library and I'm going to pack some tinies in my bag because I don't know which one I want to read next. All right. Talk to you later. lunchtime. It's kind of chilly. Uh, I'm headed over to the library, drop off this book, and I brought two tinies with me. So I'm going to find somewhere to sit for a few minutes and read one of them. I'm back working from home today. I have approximately 40,000 meetings. I started Offshore as my next tiny. Offshore by Penelope Fitzgerald. I am making very slow progress on it. Only like 25 pages in, but I'm enjoying it. The premise appears to be at this juncture, a group of people who live on boats on the Thames, which is a cool premise. Seems like a, perhaps a character book, a cast of kooky characters and their various lives. I'm looking forward to it. I'm here because I've gotten a few requests for something called a bookshelf tour. I spent a couple hours reorganizing or reshelving these books last weekend and I did a lot of complaining about how long it took on Instagram. I got some messages saying do a bookshelf tour and I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't actually know what that is or why you would want it, but I'm here to give the people what they want. I probably could have Google, watched a couple bookshelf tours, knew what I was getting myself into, but I didn't. So we're making this up as we go along. All right, here we go. First of all, if you watched my video with my partner, Justin, you'll know that 
he's a psychopath and he won't really mix books with me. He hoards all of his books in the attic where he has his home office. There's probably three times as many books up there as there are down here. So most of these books are mine, not all. You will see a random sci-fi in here and those are almost certainly Justin's. Why he has left some down here but keeps most of them up there, I don't know. Uh, but you won't see any like Canals card here because those are Justin's and they're upstairs. I will say I definitely have not read all of these books. I've read most of these books or they're books I want to have around in case I do get to, but they're not in the immediate TBR because the books on my TBR, books that I haven't read that I want to read are upstairs. So these are mostly books I've read. Okay, here we go. I have them organized by last name of author going down the first half and then back up. Now that I look up here, I probably should have gone all the way across, huh? Well, too late for that. Chimamanda. Um, the first row goes through Roberto Bolaño. My beloved Elizabeth Bishop poems are up there. Claire Louise Bennett, I love you. Lucia Berlin short stories, can't recommend enough. Elif Botman's The Idiot, so good. Moving right along from Bolaño to Cat Chow, Ghost World, so good. Here are C's to Don DeLillo, lots of DeLillos. Obviously these are all Justin's. He loves this series. This is an example of a book I haven't read yet, but I don't see myself reading it immediately. So when I reorganized my book last weekend, I moved it from the TBR here. My beloved Emily Dickinson poems, Jennifer Egan. These are two great books. Mark Edmondson was a professor of mine in college. You can tell it's a well-loved book. I highly recommend those. Moving right along. There's our Jonathan Franzen's. I gave away Purity after I read it because I really didn't like it. Here we go. And then we start up here with H's. Jane Kenyon, some of my favorite, favorite poems. We've got Lily King, Stephen King, Olivia Lang, Kesey Lehman, Pachinko. I just found out Pachinko is being made into a TV show and I'm excited about that. Luster, Lockwood, Madeline Miller, Lydia Millet, Sigurd Nunez, lots of Joyce Carol Oates, Lauren Euler, Ann Patchett section, Miranda Popke, and then um, I ran out of space on the shelves here at Philip Roth. So then I started here on the bottom. Jose Saramago, George Saunders, Smallwood, lots of Zadie Smiths, John Steinbeck, lots of Styron, Lisa Taddeo, all right, so then we ran out of official room here at William Trevor. So we moved to that shelf over there. Ann Tyler, Mark Twain, John Updike, The Vandermeers. These are definitely Justin's. I have not read those. Uh, I got rid of almost all of our David Foster Wallace. I kept three. Infinite Jest, which you can tell, took a beating in the many months it took me to read it. Do the Lobster and Broom of the System. Don Winslow is also, these are Justin's, he loves Don Winslow. These are like crime books. Uh, Colson Whitehead, Tennessee Williams. I put here on the bottom just two poetry anthologies. And then this stack here are the books I've read in the last couple weeks that I haven't talked about on YouTube yet. So they're out. And then the most important part is over here in the sitting area, I put some of my favorite authors. Usually they're authors I have multiple books from so that when you're sitting here in the sitting area, you can look at some of the faves. So we've got the Margaret Atwood stack, the Rachel Cusk stack, Gulchin, all the Ferrantes. I only have one Sheila Hetty. Uh, but that will be rectified at some point. Uh, my favorite author of all time, Justin, my husband's book, Congress and the First Civil Rights Era. Cool, cool, cool. I'm Deborah Levy, not including the like two or three Levy's that are on my TBR. Mosh Beggs, Rachel Kushner, also not including at least one more Kushner that's on the TBR. Maggie Nelson, Jenny Offal, of course, Blueberries, Nell Zink, Ali Smith, Marilyn Robinson, and then the records. All right, how was that? That was my attempt at something called a bookshelf tour. How'd I do? Now I'm really curious, so I might go watch one and see how incredibly off I was by guessing what this was supposed to be. Um, but thanks for watching if you did. And at some point I'll show the TBR upstairs. Have a beautiful Thursday. I'm gonna go eat some oatmeal and go to my meetings. And then at lunchtime I'll 
read some more offshore and I'll check back in. Good morning. It's Friday. Just got back from a very chilly dog walk. Cold out there. I've got a little red nose. Uh, Friday. I'm headed out in a few minutes to an estate sale with my friend Kim, which is always fun. And then I got some work to do this afternoon. Maybe I'll make it to the gym. Crazy Friday night plans. Catch up on Great British Bake Off, obviously. I finished Offshore. It was pure delight, this book. So fun. It follows this group of characters who live in this community of houseboats on the Thames, and they're all a family together and they look out for each other and they're just a ragtag team. There's a prostitute. There's the wealthy guy who watches out for everyone. There's the guy who's hopeless and his boat has a leak. There's the woman who's a single mother and the children of the single mother, Tilda and Martha, are the absolute best thing about the book. They are so funny, so well written, clever, spunky. Do we say spunky? I don't know. I loved it. It was great. It was fun. There's like rats running around on the boats. Angry nuns show up. It's great. Uh, what's next? Open water is going to be next. Caleb, Zoom, and Nelson. Uh, but now I'm going to go to the estate sale. I hope everyone has a beautiful, chilly Friday. What you looking for, buddy? Go to bed. Good boy. Hello. It's Friday night. I'm getting in bed with my buddy Hush here. Okay, it's bedtime. I sort of disappeared today. Turned into a busy day, so I haven't talked to you since the estate sale. The estate sale was a bust. There were no goodies there, but that's okay. It was fun to catch up with my friend. Also, the estate sale. Kim and I like to go to estate sales. We hit them up frequently. We've been to many in New Haven. At this particular estate sale, all the windows and doors were open and the fans were going and it was like 35 degrees in Connecticut today. So if that doesn't sound like somebody died in that house, right? It was creepy. It was on the creepier end of estate sales I've been to for sure. Then I worked all day and made myself a nice dinner. And now I'm getting in bed and I'm finally going to start open water. I haven't read it all today. The only other exciting book related news of the day is that I did get mail from Europa and they sent me the new Starnone. Trust, I'm really excited to read this. Uh, I loved Ties. By Domenico Starnani. It's the only other Starnani I've read. I talk about it in my trick endings video from last April. So that's the news. Tomorrow is Saturday. Justin and I are going to a concert tomorrow night. On Sunday, we're supposed to go to a birthday party for an adult at Dave and Buster's. You ready to cuddle and read now, buddy? Good night. Good morning. It is Saturday morning. I'm getting dressed. I'm gonna make the bed. I'm gonna make the bed. And then I'm gonna walk the dog. And it's Saturday. The world is my oyster. I'm going to bake some apple cider bread today. And I have a date with my husband tonight. Dinner and a concert, because we're wild crazy kids. And I came here to tell you that I finished open water. I finished open water. It was not for me. This is not a me book. My friend Iggy, a literary Iggy, loves this book. Can I talk to you while I make the bed? Probably not. She loves this book and I love her, but I don't love this book. First of all, it's written in the second person. You, you did this, you felt this. It is a strong stylistic choice. It is hard to do that well, I think. Secondly, this is just like the most earnest book 
I've ever read. No levity, no sarcasm, no satire. Very earnest. It presents itself as a love story between a man and a woman. But really I would say it's actually more about male vulnerability. Being in open water is making yourself vulnerable. Male feelings, I guess specifically black male feelings, black male vulnerability, black male emotions, which is a cool topic to explore. But yeah, it just, it was so earnest. Also, it just read really young to me. Both of our characters are in college, I think. The whole book felt a little juvenile to me. They meet and then within a month they're they're constantly referring to each other as best friend. You're my best friend. I don't want to ruin this because we're best friends. That feels very much of a specific time in life. This doesn't read like there was distance. I think that when you are young and you fall in love for the first time, it feels very intense and it's hard to describe it without cliches. This book is full of cliches. It doesn't read like somebody who had this experience and then took time to reflect on it. Feels very like it was written immediately at that age. Those are my thoughts about this book. I have one tiny left. Dear Knausgaard by Kim Adrian. It's so tiny. I want to read this, but I'm not sure I want to read it right now. I did this last time at the tiny challenge, the day before it was supposed to be over, and I had one tiny left. I was like, I'm done. I want to mood read now. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna, um, not read this next. I think I'm going to uh, pick something else up. I have to tell you guys that today is the game here in New Haven, which apparently matters to some people. That is the annual Yale Harvard football game. Last time I was in New Haven, I saw Sasha Obama. Was she the one who went to Harvard? The one who went to Harvard. Was it Sasha or Malia? Making out with a boy at the at the um what's it called when you eat food out of your trunk before a football game that part anyway so that's happening today and we live in the neighborhood near the football stadium so i can already see lots of things happening out the window okay i'm gonna get my day started i need you to get up so i can make the bed mm -hmm. is made and for the record how freaking cute how cute does my new wiggle pillow look pretend you don't see the mess on the bedside tables i mean she's adorable right looks great oh, 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 <laughs> i miss my dog so what's, what's his name his name is hush puppy no oh. way <laughs> hi it is time to visit my TBR pile and figure out what I'm going to read next. Come with me. Founder. All right. I have held this recently. It was getting really out of control. It was in two rooms. I brought it back in a sane place. I'm feeling good about it. Um, where do I want to go? I've got a mixture here of books. I purchased books that were sent to me. Some books that I found at Little Free Libraries. I just bought this on a recent trip to Savannah. There's a great used bookstore there that I love. This was just sent to me by my friend, Julie, the linen librarian. I can't wait to get to this. This is an arc that was just sent to me that is getting good reviews. I'm tempted actually to do this and it's meaty and I want a good thick boy after tiny week. Funny, heart-rending, illuminating, informative. 20 year old Sybil thought she had concrete plans for the summer. She would care for her grandmother in Istanbul, visit her father's grave, study for the MCAT. Instead, she finds herself watching Turkish soap operas. That sounds pretty good. Okay, I'm tempted by this. Um, this is what my book club chose as our next book. So I'm finally gonna go around to reading Infinite Country. So I'll pull that off. Uh, what else? These are also two arcs I'm looking forward to getting to. I wanna read them all. I think I'll pull these two for now and go from there. 
Hi, I'm here to wrap up the vlog. Thanks for joining me this week as I read a bunch of tiny books. We ended up reading four tinies. And even though Tiny Week is not technically over, I'm making the executive decision to switch back to normal size books. My first one was Signs Preceding the End of the World. This was by far my favorite of the week. This was so good. This was a mythical tale of migration from Mexico to the U.S. It's about the journey of laying your soul to rest. It's about language and interpretation and what is lost in interpretation and translation was really good. Really packed the wall up. I have another Yuri Herrera upstairs. So I'm definitely going to get to that. This was great. Next I read Mona. This was good. This was satirizing academia, which I love. This had a lot to say about trauma, the effects of trauma. I found the ending hard to read. It was hard, not pleasant. It's a really, really intense description of sexual violence. I will not be rereading this or revisiting this book, and I will probably not like watch reviews or discussions of this book. It was hard to read. And then I read Offshore, which was a pure delight. So fun. Ragtag team of characters living on houseboats, looking out for each other. I loved it. So good. And then my least successful read of the week, Open Water. I can see why people love it, but it wasn't for me. Trying really hard. It was it was a lot. I'll leave it at that because I don't want to make people too angry at me, you know? I posted on Instagram when I finished this and said it wasn't for me. And I did get a couple angry DMs, but I also got a couple people saying, we knew this wasn't going to be for you. Which feels really nice. I just, I'm too jaded and messed up for love stories. I'm broken. All right. Thanks for joining me this week. Thanks for being here. Let me know if you've read any of these. If you enjoyed them, if you have any recs for me based on which of these I loved, especially if you've read this and you have any thoughts about the next Yuri Herrera to read or anything else like this. I'll see you next time. Promise it won't be as long. Love you, nerds.